Hello and welcome to another session on parallelograms and quadrangles. So uh, we are going to take up another theorem in this session. And you can see on the screen, the theorem says in a parallelogram, the bisectors of any two consecutive angles intersect at right angles, right? So this is a theorem related to parallelogram. And they're saying the bisectors of any two consecutive angles. You know what a consecutive angle is. Even if you don't know, let's try to construct this parallelogram. Then take two consecutive angles and try to bisect them. And then let us see whether they actually intersect at right angles. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to first draw a quadri quadrilateral, okay? So let me draw a polygon and that and that polygon is here so let me start with this point and this point and here c and d so i think i have drawn a parallelogram it looks like a parallelogram isn't it and you can see that uh, the the lines are parallel so you have to believe me or otherwise you can just draw it uh, in the geogebra software and try for yourself this is a parallelogram okay now what all are consecutive angles in this so what are they saying they have they are saying that we have to take two consecutive angles so here there are four pairs of consecutive angles what all so angle a angle b is one so angle a and angle b so this is one con you know pair of consecutive angles similarly angle b and angle c similarly angle c and angle d and then angle d and angle a so these are four pairs of consecutive angles. These are consecutive angles, isn't it? Now they're saying um, you have to take any two consecutive angle, any pair, then try to bisect both the angles in that pair. So let's do that. So let me delete this. And now I'm going to bisect any two. So let us say I'm taking angle B and angle C. Okay, so here is angle B. Okay, here is angle B for that matter. So let's say this is angle B, this is angle C, and I'm going to bisect both of them. So how to do that? There is a tool available in GeoGebra. So I'll draw it and first we'll try to validate it for you. And then we'll prove the theorem. So here is angle ABC. So let me just bisect it. This one and yeah. So you can see there are two lines which are created. Now both of them are the angle bisectors. One is internal angle bisector, another is external angle bisector. So I am not interested in this. There are lots of interesting theorems around exterior angle bisectors as well, but I am not interested in the exterior angle right now. I am just uh, interested in bisecting the interior angle. So this is one more, this is one more. Yeah. Okay. So again, this one is not needed. This one is not needed. and here is the point of intersection, right? So E is the point of intersection of angle bisectors of angle B and angle C, okay? Now you'd be uh, thinking that what all these long lines are. So let me do one thing. I will, you know, make them disappear and I will simply, sorry, I disappear, you know, I did something wrong. Huh? So hence, I will disappear, make this disappear, right? This line, this line is not needed. And I will simply join this with a segment. What all? So here B and E and E and C. Right? So this is what they're saying. So BE is the angle bisector of angle B here. EC is the angle bisector of angle C here. We have to prove that angle BEC. So let us try to write what we need to prove. So we are going to prove. Uh, before that, we'll, we will write what is given. So given is what is given guys so abcd is a parallelogram right abcd is a parallelogram so in short i'm writing like this and uh, be and uh, ce are bisectors bisectors of angle b and angle c respectively Okay, this is what it is. So B, E, and C, E are bisectors of angle B and C respectively. Therefore, uh, then what? We have to prove that to prove, to prove angle B, E, C is equal to 90 degrees. 
That is what they are saying. Why? Because they are intersecting at right angles. Meaning what? They have to make 90 degrees at the point of intersection. So what is 90 degrees? This angle here. This is 90 degrees. This is what they are asking us to prove. So before we prove, let us see whether it is actually true. So let me just take away this part. And I am going to measure this angle. So how do I measure angle BEC? So let's say B and E and C. Yeah, indeed, the software is saying at least that it is 90 degrees. See, you can see that. But how do we prove that for any um, any such uh, parallelogram it will be true? Will that be true? So let's try to shift the parallelogram a bit, change the parallelogram. Yes, now again, I have made another parallelogram. You can see the point of intersection of the angle bisectors are meeting at right angles, isn't it? Isn't it? So let me change it once again. So this is another parallelogram. This is another parallelogram. See again 90 degrees. Correct. So whichever parallelogram, in fact, there will be special cases. Let's say if it is a rectangle, then also it is 90 degrees. So rectangle, you know, or this in this case, it's a square. So even if for rectangle, it will be true. So whichever quadrangle you take, parallelogram you take, and uh, you take any two adjacent angles, and then you bisect them, and then let the bisectors meet at point E, then you will see E is at right angle if ABCD is a parallelogram. So that is what we learned. Now let us go back to the original shape or original case. So this was a case, I think. Oh no, it was somewhere here. Okay, no problem. So let me take this case ABCD as a parallelogram. Now let us prove it. So how to prove? Let us go to proving part of it. So let's prove. So what's the proof? So uh, you know in a parallelogram, we know, what do we know? We know that uh, in a parallelogram, in a parallelogram, adjacent angles are supplementary, isn't it? Adjacent angles are supplementary. Supplementary, right? What is supplementary angles, guys? Supplementary meaning the sum of two angle has to be 180 degrees. Then we say they are supplementary. Now let's do let's do uh, some kind some bit of writing work here. So let me say this angle is x in value. So this angle is also going to be x. Why? Because BE is a uh, is a bisector of angle B. Now let us say this angle is y, and this angle is y as well, right? And let us write it also. So we know that since since BE bisects. So we'll write like this, BE bisects angle B, therefore, and let me start right here to save some space. So therefore, we can say, so guys, you have to come from here to this part. Okay, so therefore, I say angle ABE is equal to angle CBE is equal to X. Okay, similarly, you can write similarly. What is that? Uh, angle DCE. So angle DCE will be angle BCE and that is equal to Y. Same reason because EC bisects angle C, isn't it? So now what can I say? Now in triangle, let us say in triangle EBC, can't I say X plus Y plus angle E is equal to 180 degrees. And why is that? This is angle sum property angle sum property of a triangle isn't it guys we know that uh, the sum of three three angles of a, a triangle will be 180 degrees so hence can i not write x so this implies x if you see here what is x if i have to write x is nothing but angle b by 2 because 2 times x will be angle b and similarly y will be angle c by 2 isn't it so i can write here angle b uh, by 2 plus angle C by 2 plus angle E is equal to 180 degrees. Now, uh, from this particular statement, we can write angle B plus angle C is 180 degrees. Isn't it? So angle B plus angle C by 2 will be 90 degrees. So divide this, this particular equation by 2, both sides. So you will get this yes or no. Yeah. So let me now write on this side. Okay. So B plus C is 90 degrees. So hence you can say angle E is equal to 180 degrees minus angle B plus angle C upon 2. 
So I have just taken this part to the side, right? And hence it becomes minus. So hence I can write 180 degrees. Minus 180 degrees by 2 or which is 90 degree anyways we had calculated. So this is 180 degrees minus 90 degrees. So hence it is 90 degrees, isn't it? So hence what do we get guys? Angle E comes out to be 90 degrees and this is what we wanted to prove and hence we have proved it, right? So once again, repeat the theorem. The theorem says in a parallelogram, the bisectors of any two consecutive angles intersect at right angles, isn't it? I hope you understood the theorem. Now the good, uh, you know, the, part, the question would be, is the converse true? Is the converse true? That is, if let's say, um, you know, uh, there is a parallelogram and uh, the two bisectors of consecutive angles are uh, meeting at right angles, would that mean that the the triangle or the, uh, what do you say, the quadrangle is a parallelogram? Is that always true? Need not be. Need not be. Why? I will just tell you. So in this case, the converse is not true. Why? Because let us say this is another point. Let's say D dash. And you simply join A and D dash. Okay, without doing anything, you just simply join A and D dash. Now consider the quadrangle A, B, C, D dash. Now clearly A, B, C, D dash is not a quadrangle. Correct? It can, you can see from the figure, anyways, it is not a quadrangle. But we have not touched the property that the bisectors of these two consecutive angles of the quadrangle are meeting in 90 degrees. So converse is, what would, what would be the con converse statement of this theorem? The converse statement would have said that even if in a quadrangle, the bisectors of two consecutive angles bisect or meet at 90 degrees, then the quadrangle or the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, which we proved that no, it's not necessarily be true. It will not be true always, correct? So why? Because the example is just in front in your screen. So uh, 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 the thing is, uh, if if uh, this criteria is met also, it need not be a parallelogram. So hence, converse of this theorem is not always true. I hope you understood this. Let's meet uh, in another session and with another theorem. Thank you.